when we go on to Micah chapter 5, reading from verse 7 to 9, and we're just looking at what will happen to Israel in the, in the end, in the millennium reign. At the moment, Israel has uh, many enemies from all sides. They will be persecuted. But the time is coming when the tables will be turned. And it says in verse 7 of chapter 5, In the remnant of Jacob, that's Israel, shall be in the midst of many peoples like dew from the Lord, like showers on the grass, which delay not for a man, nor wait for the children of man. Um, and so God will never destroy Israel. There's always that remnant. Um, Satan has tried to destroy Israel through the Holocaust, through many different ways. But God always raises up that remnant and it'll be like a Jew, um, like showers. You can't stop showers. You know, you can't suddenly stop. Now I'm going to try to stop all the Jew coming on the grass in the morning. It's there. Um, it's, it's, it's a definite. And he goes on to verse 8. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the nations in the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the beasts of the forest. The lion, the most powerful animal. And he says, like a young lion among the flocks of the sheep. So you can imagine a young lion of its power amongst the sheep. And that's a figure of speech um, in, in context of how powerful Israel will be amongst all the other nations. Which when it goes through, treads down and tears in pieces. And there's none to deliver. There will be no, no one to deliver them. Um, they will have all the strength and all the power like a lion. Verse 9, your hand shall be lifted up over your adversaries, and all your enemies shall be cut off. And so there will no longer be an enemy of Israel. At the moment, Israel many enemies, but a time coming where all those enemies get cut off. And, and so this goes right back to Genesis 12, um, where God says in verse 4, So Abraham went forth, um, sorry, not verse 4, uh, was it verse 2? But basically, whoever blesses Israel will be blessed, and whoever curses Israel will be cursed. And we see that today. Um, and we see the nations that align with Israel will be blessed. I mean, even if we look at Zechariah, Zechariah 8, verse 22, it says, Many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to entreat the favor of the Lord. Why? Verse 23, Thus says the Lord of hosts, In those days ten men from the nations of every tongue shall take hold of the robe of a Jew, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. And so they, they know that God is with Israel, and they'll be blessed, and so they want to go with the Jews. But if you go from Zechariah 8 to Zechariah um, 12, we see that most nations um, don't go. The most nations... Um, turn on Israel and so they receive that curse the oracle of the Lord this is verse 1 of chapter 12 of Zechariah the oracle of the Lord uh, the word of the Lord concerning Israel thus declares the Lord who stretched out the heavens and founded the earth and formed the spirit of man within him behold I am about to make Jerusalem a cup of staggering to all the surrounding peoples that time will come when the, the cup of Jerusalem will be a staggering the siege of Jerusalem will also be against Judah. On that day I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples. All who lift it up will surely hurt themselves, and all the nations of the earth will gather against it. On that day, declares the Lord, I will strike every horse with panic and its rider with madness. But for the sake of the house of Judah, I will keep my eyes open when I strike every horse of the people with blindness. Then the clans of Judah shall say to themselves, The inhabitants of Jerusalem have strength through the Lord of hosts, their God. On that day I will make the clans of Judah like blazing plot in the midst of wood, like a flaming torch among sheaves. So some of the figures of speech, like a, a lion among the sheep, as Micah says. And they shall devour to the right and to the left all the surrounding peoples, while Jerus Jerusalem shall be inhabited in its place. Verse 7, And the Lord will give salvation to the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem may not surpass that of Judah. 
On that day the Lord will protect the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the feeblest among them on that day shall be like David in the house of David, shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord going before them. And on that day I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy, so that when they look on me, on whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and weeping bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. And so the principle here is, are we leaning on the one that is pierced? Are we aligning with Christ? Are we under the blessing of God? Or are we going to turn our backs on God, turn our backs on Jesus, and then ultimately receive this destruction that's spoken about in Zechariah? Amen.